Hi, I'm James Smith from RC4 Wireless. And this video clip is going to illustrate some of the interesting props and effects that have been done using the RC4 Magic Wireless system. And I'm going to start with a sort of category of effects that is very, very popular for wireless, and that is fire effects. And this one in particular was done to create the effect of a fire in an actor's hand. But you could use this same technique for anything. It could be glowing embers under a pot, or it uh, could be fire in the bottom of a, of a, uh, of a drum, drum fire. It could be a campfire that's uh, uh, died down and it's just hot coals. So what we have is, first of all, a four-channel dimmer, a, a DMX4 dim battery. This is a bigger battery than we need for this effect. And the long cable is intended to run up the sleeve of, a, of an actor's costume. So we end up with this little um, effect light source in the palm of the hand. So it's an aluminum plate and uh, a circle of LEDs and some hot melt glue. And I'll show you just with some low levels what we have there. We start with an orange LED in the center. And then we have the three remaining channels on the dimmer are used for pairs of red LEDs configured around. So if I animate these effects, I can create a little bit of the, the animation of a real glowing ember as, uh, as air is blowing over them and they, they kind of um, dance. So I will show you that effect. I've made a little program here on my, my Swiss on DMX recorder. So I will turn that on. And now we have a glowing fire effect in my hand. It's really a really nice animated effect. Hello. This is my, uh, this is my wireless phone. So there's no cord, and you actually may have noticed the ring pattern. I wasn't even doing that manually. The phone ringer that's built into here has selectable ring patterns. But that's a separate device. The, ring, the phone ringer itself runs on 12 volts DC, and I deliver, with the non-dim dimming curve, I deliver 12 volt battery power to the ringer circuit with a little two-channel dimmer. I only need one of the two channels. So now we have a phone that rings. The bell is wired through the hook switch, so it stops ringing when I picked it up, as, as you saw me do. And so there's a perfect example of a little prop that is, right now we have it on the UK ring. That's why it's doing the double ring. DMX controlled. Hold that channel on, and it's ringing. Once again, really popular way to use uh, wireless. Roscoe light pads, a relatively recent product uh, offering from Roscoe. Fabulous LED 12 volt light fixture. Really uh, a fascinating thing. One of the most recent, uh, one of the most fascinating applications that I've seen recently um, was this embedded inside a book. So when somebody opened the book, it would glow on their face, much like this. That was very effective. And of course, it's actually DMX controlled, completely remote controlled with a wireless system. So the battery, the dimmer, and and one or two light pads were in the book prop, a com complete standalone piece. And it sheds quite a lot of light. The, uh, there are a few people in the movie business that are using these to add light to the interiors of automobiles to reduce shadow and make uh, the camera shots in the car look more appropriate. And the, uh, the people in charge of the lighting want to be able to stand back out of frame and tweak that lighting. So being able to do it with DMX and wireless often running off the battery in the actual car. So it might be plugged into the cigarette lighter, or if that's on camera, they will uh, just wire it separately into the vehicle power. So the, uh, the ability to light the interior of, a, of a, a truck cab or a car with Roscoe light pads, really, really handy, completely wireless. Fiber optics are really neat. Another low voltage um, lighting and effect um, material usually lit from an LED at the source end, but sometimes done with other um, lighting also. It's, it's a light pipe sort of thing. So in this case, we have a green LED that is inside this aluminum housing, and it is uh, beaming its light up the various strands of fiber optics. So these could be sewn into costumes and you know, create all kinds of interesting effects. The light source could be made to be smaller than this. This is running off uh, one channel of a, of a DMX2 dim. Once again, this battery is larger than it needs to be if it were in a costume. And so, uh, all, once again, all kinds of DMX controllable, very neat visual effects can be introduced 
with the use of fiber optics and, uh, and any kind of 12 volt light source. And this is a, a inexpensive modified uh, table lamp and we have added an LED light source so it's not the high power halogen lamp that would normally be in there. Now I'm going to admit to you that normally I run this with AA batteries in the base of the piece and uh, on the day that we're shooting this video I don't have any good AA batteries so I have quickly externally wired in a little lead acid battery it's overkill but you can see, and I want to be very clear about this, there's plenty of room left in that base. You can see the receiver in there a little bit there, a little sense of it. It's, there's a lot of room there. Putting in uh, AA or AAA batteries is an easy option. The LED is quite a bright light source that draws very little power. So an excellent way to really make a completely autonomous light. Take this sort of out of the perspective for a moment and picture it without the external battery. I, I just didn't want to skip showing this particular option today when I've got some studio time to show you these various things. So there is an example of really a very nice little completely untethered and portable lamp. Once again, real time controlled by DMX. Whenever I'm talking about the different kinds of loads that you can drive with an RC4 Magic Dimmer, I, you know, I typically say lamps, motors, solenoids, uh, valves, air brakes, anything that can be powered by uh, DC voltage. And one example of something other than lighting is this linear actuator. This is a 24 volt linear actuator. It is a 24 volt Pitman motor at the end. It's a screw drive device. I'm running it off my little T, uh, DMX 2 dim dimmer. It has a maximum voltage of 18, runs from 6 to 18 volts, 12 volt battery. So at full, this is running at half the speed that it could run at. If I wanted to run it at full speed, I could use my DMX 4 dim 500, which is spec to run from 6 to 30 volts. So I need the bigger box, but, uh, but I can run 24 volt loads no problem if need be. But here is an example of using a two channel dimmer one channel is uh, linear dimmable, that's giving me variable motor speed. The other channel is non-dim and it's flipping a relay to reverse the motor polarity and allow me to pull the linear actuator in and out so I can go in either direction. So here is well, moving the linear actuator outward and note that as I change my DMX level I can change its speed and flip the relay with the other channel and pull it back in. So I could use this little linear actuator for a drawbridge effect or you know, any number of uh, things that need to, a uh, little hatch to open, um, push some sort of a baffle in and out of place. There's many, many different effects that, and, and visual things that could be done with a linear actuator. Could also be used as a lifter if you've got a, uh, a rolling set piece on, uh, on casters and you wanna lift it off the ground, you could have four of these on the corners and lift it for stability. There's all kinds of things that could be done with uh, motors and linear actuators, and there's absolutely no problem uh, driving this kind of inductive load with an RC4 Magic Dimmer. If you'll remember in the, the previous demos that I did, the overview of the RC4 Magic system and the focus on the small four-channel dimmer, I showed you the, the RGB LED source, and I used this cap of a paint can as the diffuser. But here is that same light source, the same dimmer, the same four AA batteries, and I've moved it over to something that's you know, a little bit more interesting visually, an old tattered Chinese paper lamp. So same light source, and now we have you know, all of the variability in color that we have seen with the paint can lid, but now in something that's really very visually attractive. This is, imagine these all over a uh, you know, oh, hanging over little tables in a, you know, in, a, in a scene. All the color mixing that you expect to have with LEDs. They're even build them into costumes or moving pieces. I mean, this is the entire thing. There's no, there's no wiring, you know, so here it is. I'm changing colors and brightnesses and it is uh, completely and easily manipulated. It's lightweight. With a little care and construction, you could make lit balls like this and throw them around. It's really a, the color, the small size, the, uh, the brightness. This is a fabulous um, sort of tool for creating all kinds of neat visuals and props and things. And that's, that's all the things that I have to show you today.